Yeah, so in the link, I provided a data set for orange juice. So how many of you have gone through that data set? Or was there any understanding of the data set and that uh, how we will we will proceed or how will how will be the approach? Anyone? Okay. Take okay. care. So we will start with that data set. So that is a basically a orange juice data set. So let me uh, take you through that data set. So this is the data set. It actually shows which are the stores uh, across the location, what is the brand there, which is the week, something of age, and other codes. So let us see what we can conclude from this data set and uh, how we can start that uh, this in R. So this is basically an orange juice related data set. And let us see what else we can explore. So this is a pretty small, uh, actually not so. So it is around 20,000 rows of data. So uh, there is one uh, option available in the current set, uh, current version of R Studio. Uh, you can import the data set directly. You don't have to actually make a statement or to uh, to write a statement to import. You can do it quite directly, and that is one of the good features in this new version. So what I have to do, I have to just uh, import the data set from CSV. So it is asking for installing that package which installs uh, or which loads the data. So I allowed that. So it will only ask for the first time when you do it. Uh, after that it won't ask. So till now I was using the previous version of R. So right now uh, I have updated my version. So as you can see, so I will show you that this is um, the current version is uh, 3.4.1 and I was using the previous version then. Uh, Ankit, yeah. Ankit, how do we check uh, the version? Uh, okay, yeah, let me tell you. So let this uh, let uh, this get over and after that I will show you. So every time you start R, so there is a version that is provided there. So the first statement that it will load is that this is the uh, so and so version of R and this is the license. So uh, here is uh, it's written in the console. So let it get complete only after that. I can show this to you Okay, so let me now browse. So, and there is data set for R, and this is orange juice. So uh, this is the entire structure of the data set and 
in case if you wish to change any of these parameters you can do that so for example if i don't like this to be integer i want this to be numeric so i can do that i don't like this to be double i only want it to be numeric so i can change that so this is one of the good features uh, that we have in our studio uh, that could be used and can be utilized so for that you don't have to write a code every time just you have to go through the data set and you just have to understand that what are the changes that you want to make apart from that uh, also the name that I want to import so for example I don't like the name of orange juice to be abbreviated as OJ so I can change this and I can make it according to my own convenience so these are some of the good features otherwise the traditional method is also there I will show that also so let me first do it so also for this it is it will be required so let me copy this so let me import it, this in OJ so here in the data set you uh, you can see these are the previously existing data set that i have apart from that oj orange juice has been added recently so uh, for viewing any data set the command is view that data set for example if i type it like this view oj so it will actually show me how the data set looks like and it will show actually uh, the way you can see in SAS or Excel so only thing you cannot edit it here but you can see the structure how it looks like so this is one way of importing the data another way which is quite traditional and uh, which is which was previously used till this version or this uh, feature came out that is that I can write orange juice equal to read.csv so i have to import my file from csv so i will write read.csv and i will then give my address so that should be in quotes so let me put that in quotes and one more feature is also there that uh, uh, my data set contains the header so i want header to be true so for that i will write header equal to true and this is one of the way you can import it from a CSV. So here you can see another data set has been added. So I have changed the name. So it is the same data set. The only thing is uh, just to make, uh, just it doesn't make a confusion. I have made it like this. So first one we have directly imported from the import data set part with uh, directly from here. Secondly, by writing the command. So you can do it in any way you feel convenient. Uh, so I always prefer this way because you can also uh, manipulate the type of the column. For example, if I want a particular column to be in a particular format, I can do that. So what all file formats are supported by default? So Vimal is asking this. So uh, CSV is mainly, uh, so by default CSV could be imported uh, readily in R for apart from that if you want to do it in XLSX so for that uh, uh, our package is required so that is a bit difficult so previously you must have seen that uh, when I in, when I started importing from CSV it installed some of the packages in the beginning so if you can see here so it's not there yeah. so in the beginning when I did that you you must have seen that some of the packages were installed so it actually needs some of the packages to install from excel spss sas and yeah json and xml con can you can use that to import as well those can be used you can even import the data set from html from an html page also it can be imported compressed file format uh, i'm not so sure but uh, these are the main versions that I've worked on. JSON can be used, XML, yeah, uh, pretty much can be used. Even HTML can be used. Uh, even you can link your R with uh, Tableau, Python, uh, Tableau, uh, SQL to fetch the data. So these are the main flexibilities pro, uh, available in R, but that comes with different packages that you have to load. Uh, for example, I think for SQL, there is a package SQL Lite. Using that, you can uh, import from 
SQL or SQL Server. So this is the way we have uh, imported the data and let, let us now work with this data. So first of all I have viewed this data and now let's say so what is the class? Uh, so in the first class uh, so we have discussed what it does. So any idea? Okay, so this will be a data frame. So the format of, uh, uh, yeah, uh, so because uh, orange juice is a data, so it contains as a data frame. Now let's say if I want to see first few observations, so for that I have head. Head by default shows first six observations. So you want to see first six observation. So I can, here I can see. So these are the store, these are the brand, uh, these are the week, log move, feed, price, and so and so. So these are the, so Vimal is asking view signifies. So it actually views all the entire data. So let me execute it once to show you. So in this way, after executing view, you can see this the entire data. Yeah. is referring to OJ because uh, I have loaded the I have loaded the data in the data frame OJ so that's why it is referring to that so entire data is stored in this so by default here it shows first six observation what if I don't I need more than that so what I can do is I can give OJ and I can give how many uh, rows I want so for example, I want only first 10 rows, so I can give that. So here it will show first 10 rows. What if I need not 10 rows, a bit less than that. So let's say first three rows only. So it will show me like in this way. So this was for head. Now any idea what if, uh, what will be the command for viewing the last few uh, data? Correct, Naresh says tail. So yeah, it is tail. So it's just a common sense. So head for the starting and tail for the end. So tail in the similar way will show me last few data, uh, last six uh, rows of the data. So these are the last six rows of the data. And in a similar way, if I want uh, something less or more than six or three, uh, six. So in this way, I can manipulate that. Now one thing here, it includes all the columns. What if I don't need all the columns and uh, I need only few of the columns? Yeah, Tarun, I'm coming to that somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I'm coming to that. So for that, uh, so I've previously mentioned that if it is a data frame or a matrix, uh, you must be uh, you must be aware of that convention that first it stands for row, second uh, attribute or second uh, argument stands for column. So if I give it like this, my data name with the square bracket. So first argument will contain my row, and second argument will contain my column. So in this way, let's say I have to subset my data. And let's have to understand how it works. So this is one of the good method. 
so let's say uh, I need what is there in the first row and what is there in the fifth column so it is feet so feet is the fifth column let's say one two three four five it is the fifth column and what is the first observation so first observation is zero so it come, came out to be zero so similarly if you want uh, something like uh, 2780 and 7th column so it will give something like this so this comes handy when you are making some data manipulation and you have to check uh, uh, which data to use so women tail and head is mainly used for first and last tail and head can be used but uh, the same, uh, only thing is that by default uh, tail will return only uh, last six and head will return only uh, first six so in case if my uh, data set is less than six so by default what comes uh, it starts counting from last and it ca starts counting from first so that is how tail and head is uh, calculated there tail and head can be used but it is only uh, convenient to use only when you have a, you only want to get a, a picture of the data how it looks like and what is the so you're saying like this okay uh, see one thing is that here I have returned only one uh, data only only one uh, for only one column and one row so it gave only one data so if I put tail so automatically it will uh, it cannot give me more than uh, one. Oh, sorry. So it can only give me one because by default there is only one there. So this thing you need to understand that uh, row comes first and columns come, come second. So what if I miss out the comma? Any idea? I have missed out the comma. So it will give me an error because uh, it is not a list, it is not a vector, it is not an array. It is a data frame and it uh, expects it to be a two-dimensional. So I have to mention the two-dimensional. For example, if uh, uh, in case I want only uh, the 230th row, I can leave the column part blank. So by default, it will contain all the columns that I have. So here it will have all the data of the 230th row, all the columns. So in case if I leave it blank. Similarly, if uh, I mention a column and if I omit a row, it will give me all the rows of that column. So this is how it is. it works. A few more things. Now let's say I need a combination of few of the rows. 1, 13, 14, 18. So this is the combination of rows that I have and now let's say combination of columns. So it, what it will give me, uh, first row, 13th row, 14th row, 89th row, and 861st row. And first column, second column, third column, fourth column. So this would be the combination there. So this is how it has given me. Like this. Okay.
now suppose let's say let's do it in one more way orange juice and I need a combination of first to fifth rows and my column name so if I have to mention my column name with name what I can do is I can also give it like this brand so it will only give me the data for brand so brand that I have is Tropicana Tropicana for first five observations similarly if I need it like this I don't need brand I need week so it will give me what are the observation there in the first five rows and what are the weeks there that I have so let's say uh, for now I don't know what is the number of rows that I have here in the uh, data set so for calculating the number of rows one thing you can do you can look here for number of observation so this will give you a picture of how many observation it contains for now if you're not working here in uh, R studio and you're just working in the R interface then what you can do is n row so n row will give you what are the number of rows there in orange juice so it gives number of rows so these are my number of rows and then similarly what will be the command for number of columns please type in the comment section yeah is it n calls? Yeah, n call, correct. So these are the things which are quite self-explanatory. You can understand it yourself. And that is why it is quite uh, user-friendly and uh, becomes quite good to learn. So these are my number of columns. I have 17 columns. And now let's say uh, I have the number of columns and I want to know the names of that column so there are two commands for this one is names and second is uh, call name so these are the two commands using which you can know what are the column names that you have so let's try this out names of orange juice so this gives me just a minute yes so it was interrupted in between so let's start so names give me all the names of the columns that I have similarly let's try with call names so call names for orange juice so both work in a similar way, uh, similar way so as I said in my previous class or in the first class that same thing can be done in various ways in R you have uh, different commands and you can do the same thing so uh, now one few more manipulations here I know I have uh, 17 columns here what if I want to have only 16th and want to know only the 16th column what is the name of the 16th so automatically this uh, entire thing is in a form of a vector so if you give in square braces this index so that it will give you what is the name of that 16th column so it gives me like this the CPD uh, CP district of 5 so let's say I want only the 10th column like this now let's say I need a few combination of columns so combination of uh, 
वन टू फोर सेवन एंड टेन सो दिस विल गिव मी कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दीज कॉलम नेम्स वट आर देर पोजिशन एंड नो इट डजेंट स्टार्ट विद जीरो इट स्टार्ट विद वन विमल सो लेट मी शो यू इन दिस वे सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल सी कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ फर्स्ट सो फर्स्ट आई एम एक्सपेक्टिंग इट टू बी स्टोर सो हेयर इट केम आउट टू बी स्टोर सो हेयर ऑलवेज रिमेंबर इट स्टार्ट विद वन नॉट विद जीरो so hope everything is uh, good till now so zero uh, okay so zero actually doesn't exist for this so this is just a character format but there is nothing there in that so it doesn't contain anything so let's say uh, now let us work with what are the brands there in the data that i have so let's say so this will give me the entire column so all the data that i have so because what happened is uh, it has so many rows so it has restricted my view so only few of the things i am able to uh, understand what are the things there so let's say i want to know what are the different uh, uh, brands that are there so for that what i can do is first of all let us see what is the class of this on this brand orange juice and brand so class is character so in case if it is a character i cannot know how many levels it has so for that i have to convert it into a factor that i showed you in the first class that how to convert into a factor so let us do that again so orange juice and has a brand and i am converting into as dot factor so it's quite uh, easy you have to just uh, cast it so it's similar to casting in sql or changing the format in sas so as dot factor now if i check what is the class of orange juice it comes out to be factor and now it will show me how many levels of factor it has so just give levels of orange juice and my brand so it has three levels only ठीक है एंड लेट से आई वॉन्ट टू मेक अ समरी ऑफ सो हाउ मेनी सो इन दिस ऑरेंज जूस ब्रांड सो दीज आर द लेवल दैट आई हैव बट हाउ मेनी काउंट इट कंटेन्स ईच ऑफ द नो तरुण वट यूर सेंग एम नॉट गेटिंग so uh, what happened here is it contained only three levels actually three character variables so it was casted in uh, factor then and using that i have made uh, so using that uh, i have made it into a level so when i uh, give this command levels of orange brand it gives me uh, three levels that it has so let's say let's let us want to make a summary of it so orange juice brand so this is the distribution so all are equally distributed equal number of dominics minute maid and tropicana so all are in equal yeah correct correct bimal three levels mean three distinct values that it has now suppose orange juice dot so let's say data 
so here I am storing uh, what I need to do is uh, you must have come across a statement in SAS where what you do is you actually subset the data and put it into some other table so here uh, sim something similar I will try I will subset the data and let's say so first let me show you this something like this how to subset and how it actually works so let's say if I am doing this orange juice brand equal to equal to Tropicana so uh, uh, what it I should expect out of this command any idea so this is a comparative sign so what I should expect anyone hmm. so yeah it filters uh, Tropicana but uh, uh, this is not the purpose of this equal to equal to sign it will only make a comparison so in a way equal to equal to sin yeah correct correct Siddharth it will only give me true or false the only purpose of equal to equal to is uh, to make a comparison so here I will have so many levels so false true true false false so this is how uh, my so it will contains for all the observation starting from 1 to 2000, 28,947 so for all the observation it will give me true or false what are my values for each of the observation and based on this I can subset my data so what I can do is from here I can orange juice so see what I have done is I have put a restriction on row so row subsetting so the, what it will give uh, it will only take uh, Tropicana uh, so all the levels which are true so, so so for all the rows which has Tropicana that will be stored in data one so let's see what are the brands that I have in data one so data one is full of Tropicana let's say I don't I want to see it like this I want to see it as a levels so level uh, here what uh, happened is it is showing me three levels all the three levels uh, any idea why it is so Yeah, yes say that it is required to first make it a factor then only you can you will be able to see levels otherwise it will show null so any idea why it is giving me three levels here because I have subset I have made a subset of the data I have only included Tropicana then it should show me only Tropicana Okay, uh, somewhat but uh, the main reason is uh, what happens R is an object oriented programming so it has an hierarchy so what happens is uh, the structure or the features that are there in the orange juice data set gets transmitted to data one as well so orange juice had three levels of brand so same thing was imparted in data one as well so data one also has three levels uh, and whether I have removed it or not or as as you can see I have removed all other uh, brands and only included Tropicana but still it is showing three levels um, only reason for that is it has uh, transmitted it features to data one so now if I show you what are the distribution of all the brands that I have so data one 
data one brand so see all are zero but only tropicana is there so yeah what i was saying is so uh, data one contains only tropicana but i but when i executed levels of data one for brand it gave me for all the three levels that were there the reason for this was the original data set or the mother data set had all the three levels and for this reason the subsequent data which came it also had three levels because because it has inherited that feature for this reason but uh, when I made a table of uh, this brand it showed me that uh, Dominic's contained zero minute made contained zero and Tropicana was only there with all these observation okay. uh, so uh, like from where you have compared this value I'm not getting that point so like when we are comparing this so mm -hmm. how it is giving true and false so like in each uh, like in every row and every column, we are mm -hmm. not going to find. We are not going to give you false. No. So what happened is, uh, see, uh, as I have explained earlier, this part is for row and this part is for column. So column, all of all the column I have selected, and I am only subsetting the rows. So while subsetting the rows, I have put a condition on brand that brand should be equal to Tropicana. So this is how it has subset. So let's say if you, if you want to see a, a SQL equivalent for this, so this would be an SQL equivalent. So select star from orange juice where brand equal to So this will be my uh, SQL equivalent. So you can compare it in this way. So because I have not given any condition for columns, so all the uh, columns are, con uh, are provided there. So for star for this, and I have put a condition on brand. So this is how it works. Okay, so let's say uh, let let's work with some other uh, levels. So, what are the call names that we have? Column names for or orange juice. So, let us see what are the weeks there available, and what is the levels for this. So, let's say table, and then orange juice week. So these are the week values that we have. So for 40th uh, week, we have something like uh, this many rows, 219. For 41st, this many, uh, something like this. So somewhat an even observation. So a better way to look at it uh, has always been a bar plot. I'm not sure if I've covered this or not. So this actually shows you. So 40th week, 41st, 42nd, something like this. And what is the actual distribution of this? And this is how it goes. Okay, so let us take few uh, more variables. So let's say dimension. So what it does, dimension of orange juice. So it will give me what dimension it contains. So these are number of rows and these are number of columns. So that is actually dimension of this. Now let's say, let's work more with uh, data subsetting. So let's say data one. 
I want to even subset this data. And I want to put one more condition there. So let's say my week has to be only 90. That is what I am taking. So here what I have to provide, I have to provide an ampersand sign. And just to make you understand better, the SQL uh, equivalent for this would be week equal to 90. So let's execute this. So what is there in my data one? Only 78 observations there. So let's execute data one. So this is how it has been. So only Tropicana and week is only the 90th week. Okay, so here it is. So let's say, uh, I've, so this was for and condition. Let's say for or condition that I want to put there. So this will be just a pipeline. And the SQL equivalent for this would be or so let us say what is there in data one. So data one now contains this many. So because of the or condition, it has picked either of them either of them. So one if one condition satisfied, it has picked them. So there are a few more methods uh, through which you can subset the data. Uh, one is also a uh, which using. So let's say if I want to store all my index here in which, so which is also a, a feature that can be used in R. So which actually what it does is, it is same thing, similar, but a uh, few more things added to it brand equal to equal to Tropicana yeah so every time it is getting overrided overridden so because uh, the same uh, I'm putting I'm subsetting the data I'm putting the entry in the same data so every time it is getting over right so uh, what this which will contain uh, it will actually subset all those data and only provide the index so so in index what uh, let us let me show you so head of index because I don't want to put all of them there okay so it contain all the tropicana so that is not a good example to show so let me
so yeah so this is was a better example too because my first uh, all observation had tropicana so it showed me one uh, starting from 1 to 12 so that's why i said this was not a correct example to show so here you can get a good uh, pattern that index uh, what uh, what it did it actually returned me the rows which uh, had that uh, uh, call uh, row name row number associated with it so for Dominic, uh, the 221st row contained that uh, brand. So it returned me that uh, number of that row. So in this way, all those rows which had that brand, that rows will be uh, returned. And I can put that in an index. And similarly, I can what I can do is I can only use those rows. So. So one thing to note here, this is as good as uh, writing it like this. So both are same. Here what I did is I stored the rows which contain Dominic's in index and I have returned this there and it is similar to this so it will also give me the same result it has stored only dominics there and then few more thing there is also a command subsetting of data so let's say data 11 and I can use it subset. So subset which data I want to subset orange juice and what needs to be subset for that what I can do is for rows I can give a conditioning that brand should be equal to equal to and select columns that I must be having that are store and week well, I have to put it this in this way. So let's say what is there in date one, uh, dat eleven. So dat eleven, you can see uh, if I put it like this, in dimension of dat eleven. So it gives me so many rows of observation and two columns. So two columns are store and week. So if, if I want to see the call names of that 11 and store and week. So it is something like a, a equivalent of a, if I make a SQL statement to just make you understand it better. So it will be select store and week from orange juice where this brand will be equal to Dominic. So I hope I'm not going too fast or uh, all of you are getting what I'm saying. So any questions, any doubt till now? Okay, then so this was about subsetting
yeah joining can be done joining we will do soon uh, inner join outer join so those things will be covered soon as well so we have all those features that are there in sql so we will cover that also and also a few more things uh, in the statement itself for example if i want to do it like this that orange juice i want to select more than uh, two uh, two columns or three columns something like this then combination of those columns and here i don't want to mention the column numbers i want to mention the name so for that in this way And let's say just not make it full observation so I'll make a combination of 67 to 90 just like this just this much only and what is there in date for so I have brand and my week numbers associated with it Now another example here suppose I want to exclude uh, these two columns and include all other columns so what should be my command uh, you all can try or you can suggest I'm saying that uh, I want to exclude only these columns and include all other columns. So what should be my command? Okay, uh, so just like this. So putting a minus sign in front of it. So a yeah, minus sign here won't work. I have to put it in another way. So this will give me an error. Uh, so So I'm excluding first, second and third column. So it came out like this. So after excluding store, uh, that brand and week. So I have all other columns there. one more syntax that we have for capturing the structure of a data set that is str structure so structure actually uh, enlarge this so here it gives me a fair bit of idea so yes so yeah for that uh, i have mentioned about uh, index this so in case if you only want to know the numbers of that uh, column that it contains for this it, it is which that which function that you can use using it uh, it will pass the row number which contains that row so let me mention it here uh, no i get uh, i'm not asking uh, about row number like uh, right now we are trying to put in brand uh, and any column name mm -hmm. okay but I we don't know the actually what in which index that column exists so we remove one two three suppose I want to remove mm -hmm. some column but I don't know the index so how can I uh, get that 
okay so index finding uh, we have already done in the uh, start so uh, for that i've mentioned that uh, let's say so call names of call names of orange juice and here you uh, you'll get to know which are the column names that you want to remove so you can get that index and then you can remove that so now is it okay yeah yeah okay and mm -hmm. so like uh, like this we uh, we can know the tape, uh, this uh, tape data this data set structure mm -hmm. but suppose i want to know the particularly column index of price mm -hmm. so that we can't do right okay column index of price so particularly uh, so let me do it in this way column index for price uh, let's see you have to check that um, so how that can be done so only for a particular subset that is provided and acha yeah, yeah that can be equal to equal to price so false 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 and true so here i have got a true so that true you can get there so for all the condition it is false and there for price it is true similarly the same thing will also work for names as well so names of orange juice it is equal to equal to price and if uh, if we want the index then i think which can be used here so which of this so it gives me the sixth one so the sixth one contains the price and thank you yeah okay now let's start uh, let's move ahead so a few more things that i was talking about so this is structure so uh, so this is a, a good command to actually see uh, what all are the structure of the uh, table that i have and in what way it is distributed so what is the nature of all other variables whether it is it is a factor as an integer numeric uh, and how i can manipulate them or what should be the transformation that i should be looking for to work with them so on so this is a good way and one more thing that uh, if some of the like for example if store had this number as character not as an integer so my first priority would be to convert it into a character no oh, sorry convert it into a numeric so that i can work with them so if similar findings were there with some other column names so i can work with that uh, like uh, so one thing that i have already mentioned towards the beginning that uh, if in import that and data set we can work with that in the very initial part so that can be taken care of but in case if you haven't then this is a very good way to actually look at the data structure and understand how it is it how it has been made or how it has been designed so i can make manipulation according to my own convenience
So now, now let's say if I want to add some of the more uh, things in my existing data set. Like for example, uh, I'm not happy with price and I want to make it make it a multiplication. So price dot 100. So I've just made a dummy name so you can make it of your own. So in last class we, we have discussed what should be the nomenclature for naming a data set or a variable or a vector in R. So you can put that accordingly so it's up to you I have given it my name so for this what I'm doing is price and, and I'm, I'm multiplying with 100 so in this way you can create a new variable so that will be a part of uh, OJ or orange juice data itself so Yeah, in new uh, new column will be added. But if case if I have not uh, exclude uh, included this orange juice dollar sign, then it would have been a separate vector, not in the same data set. So now my new variable has been created. So now if I look uh, take a look at the column names of orange juice, so my new variable has been added and it has been added towards the end. And now take a look at view, view of orange juice. Then this view will also contain my newly created uh, price column towards the end. Yeah, alter statement can also work. So in R, we also have a package for SQL DF. So if you are comfortable with SQL type work, uh, there is a package there. So we will discuss on that also. So Tarun, you're asking how to remove that. So uh, which one you're asking how to remove a column or? Uh... So yeah, in case if you want to remove that new column, uh, just a simple manipulation so uh, first of all I have ex uh, explained that if you want to exclude few of the columns you can do it like this okay now so let's say orange juice that will be equal to uh, I have to take all the rows so nothing there in the rows and I want to exclude the columns right so for excluding the columns I will put it like this and here I will put not equal to not equal to price dot 100 because that is my new column correct so this will give me the index of that uh, column and it will automatically remove and also one thing uh, so yeah uh, yeah so it will ex uh, include all the yeah this is overwriting so I'm overwriting on the same data set so I'm excluding the one with uh, the newly created variable so let's execute this and now if I make a call names of orange juice then my newly created this variable has vanished So now uh, instead of 18, I have 17. So without overwriting, uh, uh, you have to save it in a, another data set. So uh, it is there in the data set. Uh, it's up to you that if you want to uh, use it or not. See, uh, when we add it, we added it in the same data set. And if you want to exclude, either you can retain that data set or you, what you can do it, uh, 
do is you can make a new data set for example if I do it like this so for suppose orange juice still there or price dot hundred is still there I'm not uh, changing the existing data set I'm saving the changes in the new data set so my orange juice 2 contains all the columns so here it is the, uh, it contains all the 17s uh, 17 columns and my existing data it contains the 18th the newly added one so in this way you can do it in case you want to avoid overwriting so any questions any doubt Okay, so these were few of the examples. Uh, now let's take a basic example. So this is about a bit on sorting. So how sorting can be done. Say I have eight, I have nine, I have 80, I have uh, minus four, I have five, I have 10. And I want to sort in a different way. So I uh, said so that drop column option I've just shown you. So if you want to replace it the same data set, you can drop that column. So that can be done. And also there in this minus sign. So if I use this minus sign and save it in the same data set, that uh, column will automatically be dropped. So let's say if we want to order it in a particular manner. So I can do it is number order of so here it has ordered it in a particular manner in the ascending order. So by default it is ascending and suppose if I want to make it in a descending order so what I can do is I can make it make here a negative sign so it will automatically do in a negative so what happens is here the magnitude of all these variables are changed to negative so the sorting the arrangement of the sorting is in reverse order so it becomes like this Now a similar thing I want to work with my existing data. So suppose data 51 now. I want to make some changes in a few of them like orange juice that I have and there I want to make some changes with uh, and I want to sort it on the basis of week. So the week which comes first should be the first and then the rest of the things. So sorting it in the order of week. So order of week and here. Yeah. So it will be automatically sorted in, a, in that particular order. So let's say head of that 41 and dollar sign week so let's see how it is so and here I am taking 80 so first 80 so first 80 all of them has 40 so and this is let's say like this 580 so first few observation has 40 then 41 then 42 so it all has been arranged in the ascending order of week so let's say suppose my requirement is such that I have to sort in uh, two different variables not in a single and let's say uh, 
okay so right now we have done with ascending order let's do it with descending order so i'm putting it a minus sign here so it will do it in a negative order so let's do that and now you can see it has been sorted in a negative in descending order so it starts with 160 and goes on so starts reducing the number starts reducing so for character uh, okay let's try it out because let's say so let's say brand it's not meaning okay so does it work no no feedback so yeah it has been arranged in a similar manner also because we remember uh, first thing it was uh, first uh, observation that came was tropicana and now it has uh, tropicana has been uh, listed down the order and dominic has been uh, promoted up the order because d comes first in the alphabetical order so it also works the only thing here is i think it doesn't work for descending because minus sign is not valid there for uh, for this what happens is uh, minus n works with the numeric value because uh, uh, when we change the magnitude the order itself changes so there it works but here minus sign doesn't work okay so how to do it in so that is a good question let me if we have so decreasing equal to so here i can uh, give the argument or i can say uh, in what way i want to do it so decreasing equal to uh, true if I give then what has happened Tropicana is now uh, top the order is the first one to come so in this way you can do that so by default decreasing is false that means it is in ascending order so if you set that and that parameter as decreasing equal to true it will change ankit can you please run uh, line, line number 118 with minus 5 so okay. down in there okay uh, minus five so number is provided with so, so one line then 120 and 121 uh, 120 one yeah both lines yeah so, so yeah both of them are here so what was the doubt okay I thought uh, like putting a minus sign then it will uh, treat minus 5 as a bigger than minus 4. No, no. Uh, oh, uh, okay. So now it, is it okay? Yeah. Okay. okay so now uh, I'm making some aggregate function and let's see how it works so mainly you must have seen something like a, a pivot table or something like that 
so there are some similar uh, things in r as well so let's say aggregate so what i want to aggregate is my uh, let's say what are the options that i have so i'm aggregating price let's say price so what are the options buy things that i want to aggregate with so list of uh, orange juice brand so it is something like a group by functions that you must be having in sql so something of that sort and with every group by or an aggregate function you have to provide min value max value so and so on so so function also we have to provide it here so function would be equal to i'm taking mean so mean so let's say what it gives me let's see so aggregate so yeah for all of this group it has aggregated uh, the uh, price and it has given me for all the brand so it is something like uh, using it uh, using in a um, sql statement to group all of them together now let's say if i uh, want to add few more uh, things over here so yeah. let's do it in this way so do we, do we have any more so let's do it by week so so per week what is the so this is the these are the numbers that we have per week how it has proceeded so mean for the first week uh, for 40th week and so on and so forth now aggregating using a few more orange juice using brand as well so let's see what happens now so a few more levels have come into it so brand is also there a week is also there and the price is also there so now you can see more levels have been associated with it yeah actually so mean that means uh, price uh, mean, uh, average price for that specific week but now we have a uh, brand also associated here so uh, this is a uh, week so first is week then uh, comes out to be brand and then comes my price so what is the average week and now here uh, for let's say i'm excluding this i'm ex uh, adding sum so let's say let's do it now so now it is giving me the sum for all of them so it is somewhat similar to the aggregate function that we have in sql so you can uh, assume it like that like that so now last thing for the day so few of you have asked that uh, uh, how joining can be done so let's do that so let me let me make a data set and then make a join so it will give you a clear picture how joining works so i will work with a small data set so it will give you a clear picture so data frame 1 so here i am making a data frame and first is cast id combination of
10. Now let's say I have a uh, product and product is a combination of uh, TV and let's say fridge and let's say mm, fan. So one more to add TV. And okay, so let us have only two of them. And let me make another data frame. Data frame two. So first will be my cursed ID only. So on basis of which I will be making join. So combination of here I have. So I have omitted two. I have included. I have also omitted ten. And now let's see. And also, so here it's a state. So state equal to combination of West Bengal Tamil Nadu let's say Pradesh and Jammu Kashmir Now, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one more to add. So let's say Assam. So here I am making two data sets. Okay. And now I want to make a join. So for that uh, there is a simple statement merge. So merge what it will do first data set let x equal to data frame 1 and y equal to data frame 2. And using which I have to join by cust id and uh, let me make a outer join this time so full outer join let's see what happens all equal to true So this is the command for outer join. So see, all the customer ID have been included here. And the one which are missing has been associated with missing values or NA. So all yeah, all equal to true. That means all the data set has to be included. So everything has to be included. Nothing would be missed. So that is actually a synonym for outer join. That means all should be there. Okay. So this was for outer join. And let's say uh, I want to make a left outer join now. Yeah only left join so x dot all 
so this will make left join only so x is my left uh, uh, data set and y is my right data set so x dot all that means everything which is there in x should be included else should be omitted so everything there in x will be there and whatever is common that will be there so only left join so let us do that so see which are uh, all the things which were there in x uh, in common has been included and now let's do right outer join and what will be the syntax for right what changes I have to make for right y dot all correct y dot all should be true So this is my right outer join. And inner join, for that, uh, all in this term I have to remove. This will be my in join. So only the common elements have been included. So one thing I could have done here is I could have made a, for better understanding I could have made a eleventh part. So which is not common there. so now let us understand so here I have a missing value because I have just uh, so 11th is not there in this so here in the outer join I don't have this in left join I won't be having 11th in right join 11 will be there 11th is still Anyway, let me check with that. So what has been the issue I'm not getting? Yeah, it is making a inner joint for all the time. I think, uh, I think sign is not there in 139 line. That you have put it, uh, it should be is equal to. Where? In right line, one, line number 139, mm -hmm. where you have mentioned y dot all. Mm -hmm. So it should be is equal to. Uh, why should uh, uh, y dot all equal to yeah so yeah it has been mentioned y dot all equal to 2 okay, okay. in my scheme it is showing this uh, as a hyphen so I thought oh. might be that is the problem okay. yeah so yeah let me check uh, so what has been the issue yeah. because yeah it, <laughs> this way it should have so okay anyways uh, so uh, I will make that correction in the R script and I'll let you know in that group so what
what is the issue and why it is not coming out to be the proper join uh, is not coming out. So yeah, this is all for today and